Hey everybody, it's Garrett with The Tuning School, and in this week's Tech Tuesday, we're gonna take a look at VVT, what it can do for you and your tune, and how you can make a little more power with it. So what did we have before VVT? Well, nothing, just a fixed gear. So we would be able to advance or retard our mechanical timing to have maybe better high-end horsepower or better low-end torque, but not the best of both worlds. It's a convenient way now with our phasers to be able to have both of those things. So let's take a look at this. VVT, variable valve timing. Well, a lot of vehicles have this today and we can utilize it for our performance applications. We can find out that it can enable us to have a little more torque, even a little more horsepower. So let's take a look at how the old way of it worked and what we used to be able to do and now what we're able to do. So VVT itself, variable valve timing, is going to be able to essentially adjust your guys' valve timing, both the intake and the exhaust valve to this. So an older way to do this, what we had for our valve timing right here was just simply have a fixed reluctor on the crankshaft and a fixed reluctor right here onto our camshaft. So now these teeth gears right here are gonna be able to stay solid at all times. So no matter what, it's going to open the valve at the exact same time all the time. Doesn't matter what RPM you're at. So if you're at 1,000 RPMs, it's gonna open the valve at a certain degree. If you're at 2,000 RPMs, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, or even 10,000, it's gonna always open the intake and exhaust valves at the same degree of duration. Now, what we had found out in, in our older ways is if we took and started to advance or retard this camshaft gear right here, we were able to phase our power levels around. So for instance, if we were able to maybe retard our timing chain on this. So if we were able to take this chain and be able to jump it one tooth to the retarded direction of this, we were able to now be able to create a lot of horsepower. So when we we're able to retard it, we were able to create horsepower, okay? Now, the problem with that is when we retarded the timing and created horsepower is it would hurt the torque. So you always had a lower torque output out of this vehicle. There was no changing that because it's a fixed piece right here. So if you wanted to gain horsepower, you lost torque by retarding the timing on this. Now, if we went the opposite direction that, we could now advance it. So if we went the other direction, we could advance the timing on this a little bit. Now that's great to create, as we had mentioned right here, torque, okay? So if we create torque, the problem with that is, is we ended up losing our horsepower to this at a higher RPM of this. So if we retard it, we create horsepower at a higher RPM, that's awesome, but we hurt our torque. So if we advance it, we create more torque. However, now we lose maybe a little high, a high horsepower or high RPM horsepower to this. So it was a catch 22. So that's where we now came up with this really cool phaser right here. So our variable valve timing phaser in this. Now this phaser right here is gonna be able to now let us maybe advance and retard the mechanical timing of this engine. So in your tune, you can have the best of both worlds right here. You could end up with more higher horsepower in your higher RPM areas and more torque at those lower areas where you would want that torque. So when we ju uh, jump into the tune, what we can do is eventually just be able to phase this back and forth all off of the backside of this being able to be loose and controlled by oil pressure in your guys' vehicle. So when we jump into the tune on this, what we can see is on this specific vehicle right here, a Hemi-based vehicle, we have a single camshaft, such as we saw in the last one. But we do have two tables that are actively working here. We do notice that it does say that we are disabled on the intake cam, and we're specifically driving this off of the exhaust camshaft on this. So all of our numbers are gonna be driven off that. Now in our Dodge course, we do also have a calculator used for it so they'll help you come up with new numbers that you need to be able to find that peak torque and that peak horsepower. What you can notice here though, is at a different RPM range, it decides to now be able to phase the camshaft in different areas. So if we take a look at our low RPM area, such in this right here, what we have done in this area right here is now been able to effectively advance that timing. And if we were able to advance it, keep in mind, once again, we were able to create torque. So that helped us out in the low RPM area to create that torque. But as we notice, as we try to get toward the higher RPM into this, it starts to retard that back to this. So when we start to pull the mechanical timing back out, we're able to create that high RPM, high horsepower. So if we do this and we do this properly, what can we end up with? 
So when we take a look at a dyno graph here now, we can see where this is gonna be able to optimize this for our power and torque output to this. So taking a look at this dyno graph right here, we can see that realistically, we were able to have the red and the black run right here. And the only difference in this is going to be adjustments of the VBT. So on this Hemi based vehicle right here, what we have done is now effectively be able to create more torque in this even area right here. But look at guys, the horsepower still even maintains up. So we're able to create more horsepower and more torque with just simple adjustments off that VBT, all from simply being able to phase forward and backward as needed on this vehicle. So now that you've seen the look at this, why would the OEMs decide to do this on almost all of the vehicles today? This isn't just a Hemi based thing. Well, what we see is not only the effects of being able to create more horsepower and more torque, but actually it's great for emissions purposes also. We're able to get rid of a lot of our NOx gases, our oxides of nitrogen. So a lot of vehicles today use this, even in comparable to getting rid of an EGR valve now. We can use this for having through circulation back into our engine to control the emissions of this. So there's all kinds of great things that VVT can do for the vehicle, not just the performance side of things right here. If as we dig into the Dodge book on this, what you guys can see that each one of these things built into the book are able there to get you more power and more reliability out of that vehicle. I hope you learned a little bit about VVT and what it can do for you on your vehicle. For more high performance tuning knowledge, make sure to follow us on social media. And as always, stay tuned.